Um, I'm concerned that if they uh, if they take a, a, a a block of money and turn it over to the union. And then the union is able to save a few jobs from South Eddie House where they don't have no layoffs, that they'll gladly take these take this money and assign some union reps to to administer the, the retirees' health care, which is a dangerous thing. At least looking at it from my standpoint, um, which is a biblical standpoint, the Bible says that uh, you know, it's not for the children to lay up for the parents, for the parents for the children. It's not my job to live off my kid's back. You know, I'm supposed to try to uh, leave him something more than I would have. You know, in other words, don't sacrifice your children to keep something for yourself. It's not a, it's not a very wise or very, you know, and, and it's not the moral high road. I'm raising that because I think we need to be battling for national health care. Well. I'm just saying that I don't think that a lot of the delegates here, for whatever reason, are really articulating at this convention the way the people back at home really feel. Because people are frustrated, they're very anxious. Being from Flint, the way our community has been devastated, and the threat of the Delphi bankruptcy, and we're calling it Delphi. We're calling it uh, Hurricane Delphi. And that threat and that cloud is still hanging over the heads of our community. And this is a, con a main, main contributing factor to the rise of crime and the other social uh, pathologies and things that's confronting the high divorce rate, the, the high percentage of children in foster care. And all of these things are uh, a, a consequence of the corporate downsizing and the corporate abandonment of our cities. I think a lot of people feel these things, but I'm not hearing these concerns being articulated at the at this convention. And I think they should be so that our negotiators can go to the table with these things on their mind about the way we feel about what's happening to our jobs and you know our community. What we're seeing is the loop for a new historical epic. You can't have this much decay without any progress. And you got the middle class falling down to the working class and the low. So uh, the issues are there and they're going to expand. So uh, we got some issues to deal with. HR 676 is what we need to be battling with. So, but, but in order to, for them to understand what they're doing in here, they got to they gotta know that we can't win this at the bargaining table. We don't need to give up nothing else on the bargaining table. And we need to take all our effort into the street and, and win this battle for national health care. So chances for another historical epic uh, looks brighter and brighter. The electrical manufacturers have refused to bargain in good faith. In other basic industries, too, such as auto and steel, the employers are tough and unreasonable. As Phil Murray says, there is a conspiracy by big business against American democracy. To understand this conspiracy, we must remember what happened after World War I in 1919. At that time, to meet the high cost of living, labor unions asked for wage increases. The answer was a lesson. Employers mobilized the full power of the government against the unions. Attorney General A. Mitchell Palmer said he was after communists. Under cover of red baiting, he and the employers crippled the trade unions. In two years, one third of the membership was lost. Big business was in control. It ran the government. It brought us to 1929. To this and this and this. 8 groups control the American economy 
not only because of their concentration of wealth, but through their strategic ownership of basic industries. Every consumer and every businessman in America hands over a percentage of their earnings to these eight groups, often without knowing it. This is what is meant by big business. This is what is meant by their control of American economy. Big business is international. There were similar groups in Germany, Japan, Italy, England, France, Holland, Belgium, Spain, and smaller countries. Through colonial rule or subservient governments, they control raw materials and markets in most of the world. This is the big league in world business. Its name is imperialism. It leads to war, as Hitler's story shows. For Hitler had a dream that his big business should dominate the world. He called his dream the new order. Foreign big business was weakened during the war and today American big business is the strongest. And they have a dream to dominate the world. They call their dream the American century. The American century means the century of big business instead of the century of the common people. <laughs>